Hello, and welcome to the first of three audio recordings of articles I've authored on using credit enhancements and other remedies to minimize the fallout from another company's distress, insolvency, or bankruptcy. I'm Ray Patella, and I'm an attorney with Kramer Burns, a full-service law firm located in northern New Jersey, primarily serving business clients in corporate matters, commercial transactions, real estate, litigation, and bankruptcy creditors' rights. We also assist individuals with estate planning and residential real estate needs. I practice in the areas of creditors' rights, insolvency, bankruptcy, distress transactions and litigation, and other business law matters. Bankruptcies will always reverberate throughout the business community, but companies that take a thoughtful approach can go a long way towards ameliorating the uncertainty and the costs that often come along with the news that a major company is in bankruptcy. While some of these firms will emerge from a Chapter 11 as healthy companies, the negative consequences for their creditors can be substantial. In this session, I discuss a handful of popular credit enhancements and other remedies companies may use to minimize their risk or exposure to a counterparty that they believe may be having financial difficulties. There are many different types of credit enhancements depending on the party's leverages, cash flow, size, and risk. All of these factors should be considered to arrive at an enhancement best tailored to address the concerns of specific circumstances. One popular enhancement I won't be mentioning are letters of credit, which, because of their widespread use, will be the subject of its own audio recording. To begin, I'll address the most simple form of credit enhancement, tighter payment terms. The simplest credit enhancement is negotiating tighter payment terms or even prepayment for goods or services provided. This requires a vendor to negotiate the contract ahead of time to obtain more favorable terms, such as shortened payment terms, getting paid more quickly or more often, for example, bi-monthly, or even receiving prepayments or cash on delivery. The advantages of this credit enhancement include that it involves minimal risk with minimal effort. It also has the capability to assist both parties' cash flow, and it should not make a meaningful cash difference to the counterparty. It also has an indirect benefit of minimizing a vendor's preference exposure if its counterparty files for bankruptcy. The disadvantages of this credit enhancement includes the remedies that are practically available if the counterparty defaults and what a company's exposure may be if payment is not made. Specifically, how quickly a company can terminate a contract or service upon default will ultimately determine how effective this credit enhancement can be. Let's move on to consignment. Sale and consignment is an effective credit enhancement in which the party retains title to its property until it is sold by the other party, although at all times the property is in that counterparty's possession. The advantages of this credit enhancement is that the party retains title and control over its property and gets its goods back if the property is not sold. The disadvantages are that a vendor does lose some control over the process since its property will be in the possession of another and the sale must carefully adhere to state law to qualify as a consignment. In addition, there are concerns that the counterparty secured lender could come ahead of a consignment party if state law is not carefully adhered to. Next is security interest. Taking a security interest in the goods sold, whether as a purchase money security interest or otherwise, is another option to secure the counterparty's obligation to pay. The advantages of this credit enhancement 
are that it minimizes credit risk by obtaining collateral to secure payment and it provides an alternate source of payment if there is a default. The disadvantages include that the effective remedies may be cumbersome and costly and require a party to proactively exercise remedies. In addition, if the counterparty files for bankruptcy, the party holding a security interest will be subject to the bankruptcy and have to appear in the bankruptcy case to obtain relief. We will now address security deposits. Obtaining a security deposit is a reliable credit enhancement in which actual cash is posted with a vendor to cover a specific exposure. The advantages of this credit enhancement are that it involves real cash to offset a credit exposure, it provides more control to the vendor, and it minimizes preference exposure in a bankruptcy case because the vendor may be deemed a secured creditor. The disadvantages are that the vendor will get caught up in a bankruptcy of its counterparty and subject the vendor to the automatic stay before it can effectuate taking the security deposit to offset any exposure. Furthermore, the vendor may not have sufficient leverage in the credit relationship to obtain a security deposit. In conclusion, we have touched on several credit enhancements that are available in a commercial setting, including tighter payment terms, consignment, security interests, and deposits. Vendors and other parties in complicated commercial transactions are advised to seek the advice of counsel to minimize credit exposure in any given transaction by ensuring that the proper credit enhancements are in place or remedies are effectuated. Please turn, tune in to the next session in this series, which will address other credit enhancements available in a commercial setting, including credit insurance, guarantees, and set off. In the interim, thank you for listening to this update, and please contact me at 973-912-8700 or via email at rpatella at kramerburns.com. I'm pleased to answer additional questions and discuss your specific situation.